I know many of you want to know how you can create your own page template for your note-taking app. Many note-taking apps like Notechef 2 already offer loads of different templates, but maybe you want to have your own branding or you want to have your own grid size and so on. And there's not much out there explaining you exactly how to create a template. Because the most important thing here is to find the right page size to create this. So stay tuned because you will learn exactly how to find out the right page size for your page templates to import it into your note-taking app that you use, Notechef, GoodNotes or Notability. I will show you also how to make gridded pages, lined pages and even dotted pages very easily within PowerPoint. And this is one of the reasons why I'm using PowerPoint. The whole thing you will see now is just a small part of the full online course where I show you how to build a full digital journal. But for now, I want to show you the most asked question, how to build a template for your note-taking app. So let's go. In order to create a template or a journal or a planner for the note-taking app we want to use it in, we first need to find out the page size these note-taking apps use. So you can do this in any note-taking app you are using. I will show you this now in Notechef 2. So you just simply have to go into your note-taking app. So in this case, Notechef 2, I will create a new node. Doesn't matter, quick create anything. And there we go. So we have a portrait oriented template here now. So just change this template to something we want to have later on. So let's say we want to have this gridded size, then we will use this template and we will export it, the current page, as a PDF to any cloud service or wherever you want to save it. I will just save it in the file section in my iCloud. So I important now to choose PDF format here. The file name, well, it doesn't matter. And show ba page background is important as well that is switched on so you, we will see also the grid later. So press next and then save iCloud and I just save it there. And that's it. And now let's have a look at our desktop PC or on your Mac or where you are able to open this. Okay, now we have the template on our desktop. In my case, it's Windows desktop. It would be the same for Mac. And now we have to open this template we exported from on our, our note-taking app in a PDF reader. So I recommend using Adobe Acrobat Reader. It is free for da to download, but you might use any other PDF reader as well. I'm sure there will be the same option available I want to show you now. So just open this now in your PDF reader. So there's the template, we just exported it. In Adobe Acrobat, right click on this and choose document properties. And in here, you see now page size in inches. Be careful, you really need to do this first before you even start doing anything in PowerPoint. Because if you created something in PowerPoint and you will change the size afterwards, you will just mess up everything. So this is why you really have to define in advance what you want to create and what note-taking app you want to use it for. So let's go into PowerPoint and create a new file. Just a blank presentation. Let's delete this first slide. And now we go into View and Slide Master. And in here, we now change the slide size, custom slide size. And here, it is actually in centimeters because I'm in Germany, but it doesn't matter uh, because PowerPoint is really nice in converting these things. So I still can use the 18.97 inch and add it to the PowerPoint. I N, make sure that you add a unit as well. And as soon we leave this, it will convert it directly into centimeters. So that's really nice and convenient. So 13.33. And again, don't miss the unit and it is converted. So it's on landscape and now press OK. And now it asks you how to handle the things that are already on the slides. Should it maximize everything so it will stay on the same scale or should it change the content in there? So we made the change to content and now you see it actually 
so it made really a change here because it was squishing it together. It doesn't matter here, but just imagine you would have created a lot of stuff and we will do this later on and you change the size, it will just mess up everything. So that's the thing why it's not as easy to switch between landscape and make a portrait version as well. So to finish this preparation here, we will just delete all these layouts. Now everything is prepared to start. Many PDF softwares allow to export as an image as well. So all you have to do is go to export to and export as an image and as a JPEG file, for example, or PNG, it doesn't matter, and save it somewhere. Now we go into, PD into PowerPoint and we will just drag and drop the page in there. So now you see it is on our slide and it can turn around. So it's hard for us to work on this. So just let's delete this and go back into our slide master and just add the, pic the picture here again. And there we go. So you see it fits perfectly in our canvas because we prepared the size properly so the, the image size is the same size as we prepared the slide here. So what this does now that we have it in a master slides, we can go back to the front end and now it's not editable on the front end. So this allows us to easily make some edits now and create our own grid just using this template as a template. So how we will do this, the best way I found out to create gridded or lined pages is using tables. If you never worked a lot with tables, don't worry, I will show you in detail how this works. It's really easy. So I just go to insert and go to table. And in table, don't use this or draw table, just use insert table. Then we choose number of columns five and number of rows five. Press OK. And now we got a table. Yeah, so that's a typical table. Just uncheck the header row, uncheck the banded rows, go to shading, go to no fill, sorry, select the table here again, go to shading, no fill, then go to borders. If it is not here already, so you can just take this arrow and go to all borders and it will look like this. So we will be able to change the color later on. This is just easier to work now. So now we will select the table and we will move it around so it will just fit to one of these edges. And as we added five columns, we will just count the columns here. One, two, three, four, five and the rows as well. One, two, three, four, five. And here we go. Now it fits perfectly the, gr the grid in the background. Now hover with your mouse over the grid here until you see this arrow appearing. If you click, you will select one cell in the table. Just click and hold and drag over so you select all your cells and then right click on here, go to insert, and insert rows below. So it will add as many rows we selected just below this. So you see it fits perfectly into our background grid. We can select now even more, right click, insert rows below. And as we see here, maybe one more time, or we can count this one, two, three, four, five, six. So we just select six of them, right click, insert rows below. And there we go. And now you see it's a little bit off compared to the background. We can just take it and adjust it like this. Okay, now we have this and now we need it on the other side. So what happens when you actually select all these columns, right click, insert, and then columns to the right, you would expect it would work the same way, but it doesn't. What actually happens is just, it will, it will add columns inside this table. So in order to do it the same way, we need to have a little workaround, which is just going double the size as we have here. So this means just let's go one, two, three, four, five. And now when we select everything 
and we make insert columns to the right, it will add the columns and it stays in the same size. So we can repeat this again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Select all. Right click, insert and insert to the right. So you see that works perfectly. We are a little bit off here. Just select it and go, go a bit further. So we can try, you know, if you don't like to count, you also can go all the way over here and see if you get it to the right size. So we have, you know, on each two of the grid, but it seems like we have already too many rows going on. So with the arrow keys, actually, you can adjust your your objects in PowerPoint easier. And then let's just make it a bit smaller. There we go. Then we will just select this and delete the column on the back. There we go. And now we select all of them. And now we select all of them again. Right click, insert, columns to the right. And there we go. Now we have the grid nearly all over the place. Another way to do it ob obviously would be just making several tables, but um, I want to go with this now. So what we here have here now is just our own grid. So now we can just disable the background. Let's, let's go to the slide master and delete the template we just loaded in here. So now it's gone and it will be gone on the front end as well. And now we have already our own template. So we could already export this as a PDF and import it into Node Shelf 2 as a template so you can use it on your own. If you want to make it more individual, you always can go to icons um, and add whatever you like there. And there you go. Now, you know, it's just for the purpose of showing that we have something individual. And now we could export this. Make sure that you export this as a PDF. I usually create, I don't use save Adobe PDF or something like that. I usually go here and, and choose PDF in here and save it this way. So once this is saved, depending on your note taking app, how you import templates, for example, GoodNotes and NoteShelf 2, they offer custom templates you can use as a default template and background. You can just import this PDF now and you're ready to go. Notability doesn't allow this actually. So that's why I recommend using GoodNotes or NoteShelf 2. Okay, now we have this. What about having a line template? It is easy now. Now we have this created. So let's save this as a PowerPoint file as well. So let's save this as gridded template. And of course we can now go to table design. And in here we can choose the color of the borders. So we will choose something more bluish, for example, and press again the borders and it will change the color. Not sure if you can see this, just use something more drastic so you can see what I'm talking about. So you see it changes the whole thing to orange. You also can change the width and even the, the way it looks like. Press borders again and it will be like this. So it's very thin, you see, maybe you prefer this. For the sake of you seeing it better uh, on this on the screen, I will leave it like this. You also can go to outside borders and they go away. So it will look like this. It's a design choice as well. And what about having a lined template? It is as easy just selecting this table, go to borders and just take away all the vertical borders. So inside vertical border, take this away. And there we go. We have already a lined template. So if these lines are just to wide or too narrow, you still can go to layout and change the height, the height here, maybe for enter and it is just smaller. There we go. And now you have the line template. Let's go back to our gridded one. 
because now I want to show you how to make a dotted template. It is very easy. Just write a dot in here, select a dot, and then you can choose the size of this dot, make it bold for example, and depending on what font you are using, the dot will be different as well. And then just select this cell, copy it by pressing Command C or right click copy and then select all the cells and copy paste. So when we paste it in here, we want to keep source formatting so each cell will have the same dot as we had before. And there we go. So now it looks a bit off. So we need to smaller the dot now, bring it into the middle, bring it into the middle. So it's now in the mid of the of our grid. Go to the layout again. And now we see it is the same format again. And now we get rid of the borders. So just go in here, all borders, take off. And that's it, now you have your gridded page. And if you want to change the dots, just go to home, select the table. As you know from the dotted templates, you can make it a bit grayish. So it's not as visible. And there we go, now we have a dotted template. And that's how you actually create all these different styles and templates. I hope this was useful for you because already by knowing this, how to create these templates, you will have a lot to customize and to create on your own that you can use in your, on your note-taking app for your own needs. So if you're interested to dig deeper and to build a full digital journal, I will put the link to the online course in the description below. And if there's anything else, as usual, just reach out to me and let me know.